Hey, welcome back. I want to talk a little bit about these tools up here. The Dodge Color Burn, uh, Dodge and Color Burn, um, and I'll, I'll save the HDR ones for another video because uh, they work a little bit differently. And some of what I'm going to show you is, is quite frankly, a little bit of conjecture, just kind of playing around. The um, manual is kind of sparse as to what these tools are actually doing. Um, but I have here gradient uh, from 00 black all the way up to 255, which is white. Um, I have a histogram here, and you can see it shows you what you'd expect to see. They're <clears throat> pretty evenly spaced spikes of contrast. And so I thought I'd see what um, dodge and color burn do. Now, dodge is an old photography term for making brighter, and burn is to make it darker, and you usually use those terms with um, applying to a section of a photo. Um, but here it tends to be, it seems to be used as a global adjustment, so it's kind of like a shadows and highlight slider. Um, so I'm going to start with color burn, because that seems to be the easiest one to, to see what it's doing. Um, as I drive the color burn slider up, what you can see in the histogram is that all these tones are getting compressed over here. But it's not affecting very much at all any of the darker tones, anything darker than mid-tone. So as I pull it all the way up, um, you can see it really smooshes everything over um, from the highlights all the way down to about the mid-tones and really leaving anything below the midtones, pretty much alone. There's a little tiny shift, but not as much as you would get if you were pulling, say, the, um, you're pulling the highlight slider. You can see there's a much uh, bigger shift in all the tones, even though the highlight slider does tend to affect, as I said in an earlier video, uh, primarily uh, its influence kind of is strongest over at the highlights and uh, the exposure sliders uh, influence kind of wanes as it gets further down here but the color burn is a much more dramatic example of that so the question is could you use color burn as a, as a highlights recovery and you sort of can um, I'm going to take this photo I'm going to move this uh, a little bit out of the way, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Get down here. Just gonna reset that. So this is an overexposed photo of the National Air and Space uh, Museum. Actually, it's properly exposed if you're looking at these. Um, the background is very washed out, and I probably wouldn't normally care about that, but just for purposes of demonstration. Um, if we go into Color Burn and start pulling it up, you can see you do start getting some of this background back, but it's kind of flat and washed out, and that's what we'd expect because you're squishing all those tones um, together and when you squish tones together like that, it, it, you lose contrast and it's kind of flat. So you can use that. Uh, if you did, you'd probably want to go into your tone curve and then increase the contrast by increasing the steepness of the curve in those highlights to bring back some of the contrast you've lost. But just to give you a comparison, if you look at the same kind of thing, just looking at the background, if you pull the exposure back, we actually are able to recover not just the colors here, but a lot more of that contrast and that detail um, just by setting our white point by using our exposure bias. So that's the color burn. Dodge, we go back. Here's our step wedge again. Effects primarily kind of actually works in the opposite primarily affects these darker tones here as we bring this up 
also seems to do something weird with some of these highlights. But as you can see, these tones are getting stretched out, and then they're all kind of bumping up in the middle in the midtones. So kind of the opposite of what the color burn is doing. It's slightly different, but I think their effect is about the same. Um, and then when you look at Dodge and Color Burn, you essentially get the two of them being combined together. So, um, you can kind of see as we do that, the, the mid-tones kind of get all squished up. The highlights get pulled back, uh, much more so than the, than the shadows. But that's essentially what these tools are doing. And... Um, I would say, uh, in general, when we get to the HDR part, there's more sophisticated things going on that are worth looking into. Um, but uh, as an example of what this can do, here's a this is a Dryden Theater in Rochester, New York. It's part of the George Eastman House. Uh, plays a lot of classic movies. Um, early in the morning, so there's really overbright sky and really dark shadow here. And so what I would normally do, um, let's try to bring back some of that sky. When I do that, I'll say negative one there. Uh, when I do that, obviously the whole uh, foreground gets very dark, so, but if I pull use my dodge and color burn, I can actually kind of bring a lot of that back. Actually, now I have some space to make it a little less strong. Um, you can see there's still a little dark in the front. Overall, it's a little dark. I might go into the contrast and try to boost the contrast, pull the contrast center down to make the uh, shadow areas a little bit more pop, a little bit more contrast there. You can play with the gamma. Um, you can go into the, uh, let's open up the tone curve and maybe pick um, some spots. Maybe you want to brighten that there and bring back some of that highlight detail. And, you know, do something like that. And that would be how I would approach something like this image. Um, it's one way to do it. There are probably 20 other ways that you could think of to, to do this using the various uh, controls here with the tone curves. Um, you know, bring the color, this uh, Dodge color burn up a little bit more. Um, and I think that's a pretty good start. I would probably do some more post-processing in an external editor. Um, just to bring back a little bit more of this, but uh, I might even go and I'm going to guess that memory color is going to be, I like memory color. It's a personal thing. You know, and certainly you can maybe bring up a little bit more contrast in the sky. Um, play with maybe boosting the black slightly to get a little bit more, more depth, depending on what you like. But, um, that's the Dodge and Color Burn tools. Um, hopefully soon we'll be going over the HDR tools in a separate video. Um, if you have questions or comments, please leave them. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. And if you have, uh, if you like this, please like it on YouTube so that uh, I can get some feedback as to what people like or don't like. Thank you and uh, enjoy Silky Picks.